George Adler, A Practical Grammar of the Latin Language, page 10, Pensum Tertium, lesson 3. This is regarding the second declension. So the second declension comprises all nouns substantive and all nouns adjective, which form their genitive in e in the singular. E. The terminations of the nominative, that's the thing itself, us, usually us is masculine, not always, er and ir, and um is neuter, or as you say in Latin, neuter. So let's have a look at some examples of this. Um, the example we're going to use is Dominus. Dominus. And I think what I'm going to do is pause and get out my declension glove. Okay, I'm back and now I have my science fiction declension glove. And this is how it works. The casus recti, the Roman grammarians call the straight cases, the ones that in most declensions don't actually have any change involved in them, are the nominative, the first dot on each finger, and this is our first declension, second declension, third declension, fourth declension, fifth declension, so there are five declensions, and we've got five fingers, all very handy. The genitive of each is positioned here on the knuckles. The dative here, because it's the giving case, and so of course the palm of our hands, we give something into the palm, helping to remember that the date of the giving case is here, and it's on the back of the hand too in the same place. The accusative case, the case of action of the verb, is the hand itself, the action, here. This is the accusative case. And the ablative case, up here, right? Furthest away from the action, from, by means of with. So there we have it. So we're going to look at this and of course once you have a visual form like this you can jump around so you don't have to memorize the cases in any particular order and in fact uh, it's a good idea not to memorize them as a list or an order but to try to get a more active um, system for the cases and this visual system that I developed um, I think works pretty well. So here we go um, we're in the second declension, okay? So that's the second finger. This is the pointing finger, so this is the only case of all the five, the pointing one, where there's actually a change in the vocative. All the others, the casus nominatius, right? And the um, vocative are the same. So, my master, my master, here, meus dominus, meus dominus, of my master, genitive, mei domini, mei domini, to my master, the dative, meo domino, meo domino. So let's run through this again, right? Meus Dominus, mei domini, meo domino, meum dominum. The vocative, mi domine, mi domine, O oh my master, when you're talking to him, mi domine, a very root point. But if you were talking to somebody and pointing, mi domine, right, with the second finger, mi domine. And the ablative up here, meo domino. So this is our declension glove, which you're going to be seeing rather a lot of as we go through the declensions. So if I point to one of these places, you should be able to produce the declension, right? So nominative. Meus dominus. Dative, meo 
domino. Genitive, the case of possession, right? Mei domini, right? Ablative, up here, meo domino. And here we have the accusative, meum dominum, the action case when the verb is acting on the thing, and so it changes to the accusative, so the case of action, the hand moving around acting, the forearm right, is the place of action. And evocative, mi domine, here, it only exists as far as we're concerned, except for a few Greek words here on the second, which is the one where you point. Um, let's look at the case of a word that ends in er, liber. Also, once again, we're still on the second finger, all right, because we're in the second declension. So, dominus ends in us, liber ends in er. So, liber, right? Liber meus, my book. So, we have meus, dominus, both ending in us, but here we have meus liber or liber meus. Here. Right? The genitive, which is the case, the reason why we use the genitive to tell us what case is in, that these are very consistent across all the forms of words. So, um, your books, or of your book, libri tui, libri tui. And to your book, remember that is going to be the giving case, action two, to your book is going to be Libro tuo, libro tuo, your book, here in the accusative, librum tuum, and up here the ablative, libro tuo. Neuters have this peculiarity that in the nominative, in the vocative, and in the accusative, they have the same form, so they don't change. So we have here in the nominative, saccharum bonum. It's also a form of word on the second, so it's a second declension word, and we follow our way through and up the arm, saccharum bonum. Now remember that if we're going to have that, then the vocative is going to be saccharum bonum, and the accusative is also going to be saccharum bonum. So we have three things the same. The only things we have to change, worry about changing are, of course, the genitive, the dative, ablative. Now the neuter, easy way to remember this, is a um, subset of the masculine. So what happens in the masculine will happen in the neuter except for these three. And so, of course, here we're going to have the same thing happening again. Sakari boni, just like we had, um, you know, uh, libri tui or mei domini. So, sakari boni, um, sakari boni, of the good sugar, the good sugars. The dative, sakaro bono, sakarum bonum, sakarum bonum. Saccharum bonum, and the ablative, saccharo bono. So that's the structure of the second declension. Um, I'm going to remove the glove now because it's hot and uncomfortable to keep it on. Um, there we have it, the famous Latinum declension glove. If you want to make one, you just buy a washing up glove turn it inside out, get a permanent marker, and turn it into a cyborg glove. Yes, it's not quite completely integrated yet, but one day we will have an integrated circuit running straight into your brain from the glove, metaphorically speaking. So, um, examples of words like dominus, we have pileus, um, a hat that has no brim, um, equus, a horse, and all nouns and adjectives of this declension that end in us. We have things like liber, a book, uh, culter, knife, magister, teacher, 
and neuter words sakkarum and all neuters in um like aurum gold lignum wood plumbum lead etc notice that the i of the genitive is long and the final i of latin words in general if you hit one it's going to be long there are exceptions mihi mihi to me tibi to you sibi to himself where it is common which means it can be short can be long usually short the final o of the dative is long as we heard before meo sacro meo sacro in latin words in general a final o is common but usually short as in verbs like um amo amo i love we can say amo amo um, habio i have habio so long or short and uh hmm all right which of many which of many that is going to be uh qui qui for the masculine quai for the feminine and quad or quid for the neuter and we can stick the declension glove back on again for that because this is a declinable word so we have qui that's masculine second declensions are often masculine qui quai feminine first declension words are often feminine most often more often than not so quai and quad quad is neuter we saw before that saccharum is neuter neuters are on the second as well so qui quai and quad and then we have the um accusative forms so quai travel down to accusative that gives us quam just like man sam we had in the first declension before so quam down here accusative quam quai quam qui quem qui quem and remember the rule for the neuter that it's going to be the same here as it is here so if the neuter is quad here it's going to be quad here and if it is quid here as it sometimes is it's going to be quid down here in the accusative quad quad quid quid but we have quai quam quai quam and qui or quis and quem quem is the masculine which of two also follows the same rule and we have the same thing again going on utra it's feminine utra which of two feminine and we have uter which is like magister uter and we have utrum for the neuter remember utrum's like saccharum so utrum is going to be the same here as it is here utrum utrum however utra let's see if we can guess the pattern can you it's like mensa mensam so utra utram and uter uter is going to be like magister so uter utrum uter utrum our next example um is an, a noun adjective and as you can see noun adjectives are declined in a very similar way to nouns substantive noun substantive are things nouns adjective describe the things so let's have a look at this uh we always starting with the feminine i think that when grammar books put the masculine first this is just a piece of grammatical sexism it makes much more sense if you're making your own notes to learn things in the order feminine then the masculine and then with the subset of the masculine the neuter and we're going to do the same thing because also of course we're following across first and second declension third fourth so of course the first is feminine 
and the second is the masculine. So it makes much more sense to start with mm, the feminine, Mother Earth and all that. So, good. Bona. Bona. Then bonus and bonum. Now remember the rule for the neuter. Can you remember it by now? Bonum. It's going to be the same here as it is here. So it's going to be bonum in the accusative. Bonum, bonum. Bonus goes to bonum as well. And bona goes to bonam in the accusative. Bona, bonam, bonus, bonum. And the neuter, bonum, bonum. Not so hard. Um, another example, also regular, manganus. Now we have a, an argument a little bit about how to pronounce this G. Alan says that the G sound is a sound like in hangnail. Um, so it's a hung sound. Um, but it's perfectly okay just to do a sort of a hard G. Magnus, which I tend to do. Um, I find that when I do the hung sound, it gets comes out a bit soft and people listening, it's not always clear what's going on. The G is there. I prefer it to be clear. So, magna, feminine, in the nominative. Magna, let's put it into the accusative. Can you guess what it's going to be? If this is magna, what's it going to be here? Of course, it's going to be magnam. Magnus, here, if we take it down to the accusative, it's going to be magnum. And the neuter, which is a subset of the masculine, which is why it's on the same finger, right? Magnum, take it down, and it's going to be magnum. Magnum, magnum. Magnus, magnum. Magna, magnum. It ain't so hard, especially once you start to visualize it. First declension, second declension, third declension, fourth declension, fifth declension. There are only five of them. Right. Um, another example we're going to be using in our exercises. Bad. Also regular. Mala. Which will give us, can you guess? Malam. Malus. Second declension. Malus, masculine. Malus, giving us malum. And also the neuter, malum, giving us malum, because it's neuter. Malum, malum, malus, malum. And mala, malam. Not so hard. Remember that it's malus with a short A. Okay? If you have a long A, it's something completely different. It's the mast of a ship or an apple. You don't want to end up confusing your badness with your bad apples. Right. Bad in the sense of worthless, of no value, is a different kind of word. This one only exists on the second finger. It only exists on the second finger. And the masculine and the feminine, we can think of them as coming together like this to form one thing. And it's wheelis. So it's wheelis for the masculine and the feminine. Now, this is actually a word that's on this root finger here. All right? Wheelis, wheelis, and wheelam. It's all here on the third finger. We can be as rude as we like because we're learning Latin. All right? If you can say uh, fuck mihi in Latin, then I can stick my finger up too. Right? Hope you agree. Um, so, here we go. Wheelis, wheelis, and wheelé. Now remember, wheelé is the neuter, which means that down here it's going to be the same. The rule keeps going. Wheelé, wheelé. Right? Wheelis and wheelis will give us wheelam. 
and we lamb. So we is for the feminine, we lamb for the feminine. We is for the masculine, we lamb for the masculine, and the neuter, we la, we la. This is a different kind of word, and it's our first little adventure into the third declension. All right, let's go back to a second declension word that is declined like magister. And this, of course, if it's got a second, it's also going to have a first. That's how these things work with adjectives. So, pulcra, pulcra, pulker, just like magister. So, pulcra, pulker, pulcrum meaning beautiful or pretty, like a pulchritudinous policeman, possibly, right? Um, but it is a good English word, pulchritudinous, so you can start using it and annoy people. A pulcra, pulker, pulcrum. Pulcrum, it's neuter, pulcrum, pulcrum, pulcrum. Pulker, pulker, the neuter, ach. This is masculine, and the accusative, pulcrum, and pulcra, pulcram. So pulcra, pulcram, nice and regular, pulker, pulcrum, nice and regular, just like magister. And also then we have the neuter, pulcrum, nice and regular, like saccharum, pulcrum, pulcrum, meaning pretty, beautiful. Um, another form meaning pretty. Uh, what is now the island of Taiwan was once upon a time called Formosa. Formosa, pretty, beautiful. Formosa, Formosam. It's on the first declension. So Formosa, Formosam. Right? What's the masculine going to be? Formosus. It's like bonus. So it's bona, bonus, bonum. Formosa, Formosus, Formosum. So, formosus, formosum, and the neuter, formosum, formosum. There we have it. Another example that's on our third declension is turpis, meaning ugly. Turpis, turpis, and the neuter, turpe. So, if the neuter is turpe, in the accusative it's going to be turpe. Turpis for the masculine. Turpis for the feminine. Turpis for the feminine. Turpis for the masculine. And the accusatives. Turpis, turpem, turpis, turpem, turpe, turpe. So the is goes to m. And the e stays as e. So let's have a look at some examples of these. Um, sakarum. Sakarum. Here we have sakarum. Then we have to have the neuter matching it. Meum and the bonum. So it's sakarum, because that noun is on this here and it's neuter. The adjective has to match it. So sakarum, meum, my, and bonum has to match it to bonum. We can't say sakarum, meum, bona. We can't say sakarum, meum, bonus either. It has to be sakarum, meum, bonum. What happens if the sugar, my sugar, is not good, but it is um, poor quality? Then we would say this. We'd say sakarum, meum, it's a neuter word, and the neuter on this finger, fagli, is wile. Now this is where, um, in the beginning, Latin is tricky because the endings, right, we have sakarum, um ending for the neuter, and here we have on this finger an e eh ending for the neuter. So sacrum wile. Sacrum meum wile. This causes a lot of confusion in the beginning if you're starting to learn Latin. The solution to this problem is learn your declensions and all that. Just read and read and read and listen and listen and listen and read and read and read. Lots. Hours and hours a day, right? Download Latin, get it wherever you like. The internet's full of it now. You can get it from my site if you want to, it's not expensive there, or you can ferret around online. 
My advantage is just start to put that Latin into your ears so it goes into your brain so your brain can start forming those nice neural networks which you will need so that this all becomes automatic like it would be for a Roman. If it remains as algebra like it is now you will not get anywhere. You have to get past the point of algebra to the point where you don't think about it. Although now when I'm actually making it explicit I need to think about it. When I'm reading when I'm writing, um, I don't actually think very often about the grammar, it just pops out. Um, but, these gloves make noises. Um, at this point, you, so yeah, even when I think about the grammar, it's, uh, you know, when I think about English grammar, I have to think hard. Latin grammar is the same. So let's have a look at some more examples of this. Um, mensa is a first declension word, mensa. It's on the first finger, it's feminine, Mother Earth, the beginning of the world, all these things, the first thing, right? right? As Lucretius says, right? Venus, the genetrix, right? The mother of all life. So, here we go. Um, mensa, table. So, a beautiful table, mensa, cannot go with pulcher, because that's masculine. Mensa cannot go with pulcrum, because that's neuter. It has to be mensa going with pulcra. Mensa, pulcra. Same with kaharta. Kaharta is paper. Kaharta cannot go kaharta, kaharta, um, wile. No, because it's feminine. So, it has to be kaharta pulcra or kaharta wilis because wilis is either masculine or feminine and kaharta is feminine so kaharta sorry I'm going to the wrong finger wilis here so kaharta wilis my apologies for not going to that finger um, let's look at liber liber is a second declension word liber liber is masculine so, liber turpis, liber, on the same finger, bonus, right? So, liber turpis, liber bonus. We can't go liber bona, uh-uh, can't do that because liber is masculine, this is a feminine, bona, bonus, and the new on the same finger, bonum. And adjectives of three, of two terminations, like turpis, and turpis and turpe. The masculine and the neuter are always on the same finger because the neuter is a subset of the masculine. Right? So if you learn your declension, if, if you learn your words, feminine, like I said, then the masculine and then the neuter, you will see that, you'll see why it is that the neuter and the masculine are on the same finger in both cases of uh, adjectives of what are called two terminations, turpis, turpis, turpe, and of three terminations, bona, bonus, bonum. So the us and the um on the same finger because the neuter, in terms of its um, morphology, the shape of the word anyway, um, is a subset of the masculine. <clears throat> Let's do this with the question words. Remember we had the question words, which were quai, quiz, and quad. Quai, quiz, and quad. So it's going to be quai, kaharta. Right? We can't say quiz, kaharta, because quiz is a masculine, and it has to match the thing we're asking about. So we can't say quiz, kaharta. It has to be quai, kaharta. Quai, kaharta. Um... We do say, pilius, here he is, pilius is masculine, it's on the second finger. We would say, quis pilius, which, brimless hat, quis pilius. Or we would say, right, quad saccharum. Saccharum is on this finger, quad is on this finger. Quad saccharum. Um, now, of course, we also have words that are on other fingers that are masculine and feminine. So, um, quai and quis and quad would also 
go to masculine and feminine words on these fingers. But more of that later. So we can jump across. Okay. Um, so, quod sacarum, quae caharta, qui liber, or quis liber. We're now on page 12 of Adler, and he says here, the interrogative, that's the question word, quod, is always used adjectivally. So it's, it's, it's what sugar, what sugar is um, describing the sugar, what type, of, what sugar. And it will agree with its noun, just like blue sugar, should such exist. What sugar is like the word blue, so it agrees in the Latin. Well, we have masculine blue, feminine blue, neuter blue in Latin. Um, quid, however, the word quid by itself, can also behave like a noun substantive. Um, and that means it behaves like a noun. We can say the king's book. Right? Um, and it is used all by itself, or it has a possessive noun attached to it. Just like book can have kings attached to it. Um, and we'll learn more about that later. Now let's have a look at some examples from Adler on page 12. Um, is it to you good sugar? Literally, we're being very literal here. Est ne tibi saccharum bonum. Now, est means that the noun stays up here in the nominative. So, is it est ne tibi, which is dative, to you? Saccharum is neuter and it's up here nominative. Saccharum bonum. So, Est ne tibi saccharum bonum. Sane domine, so yes, master. Sane domine, here we have the vocative on the second declension, dominus, domine. So sane domine, vocative, sane domine. We only going to have dominus in words ending in us. That are on this finger. Otherwise, the vocative will be identical to the nominative, which is why they are called by the Roman grammarians the casus recti, the straight cases, because the Romans talk about the uh, cases as bending, which all makes sense because if we think about it like an arm, it has articulation, it bends. Okay? Um, and they even used the word um, articulus, the word for joint, was used by the Romans to describe the bending points, interestingly enough. So this isn't, it is my conception to make the glove, but the terminology of Latin grammar is the terminology of a hand, right? The clensions bend. We um, f inflect them, we bend them inwards, right? So, sane domine. Est mihi, est mihi to me, right? Saccharum bonum. Right? What we're actually doing now, we're doing something called parsing, but we're doing it without actually saying what's what um, when we are parsing using the glove. So instead of saying this is nominative, this is vocative, I'm just pointing at the things. It's a shorthand. Now, habesne. Do you have? We do not say habesne tinia because habio is a word that moves its action across. And so when that happens, tinia, a ribbon, we can't use the nominative. We have to use the accusative because I have. Here is my arm. It's being had by this hand. Right? So, um, if you think about it in this way, whoops, sorry, sorry, my computer screen blanked out on me. I need to sort of see what I'm doing so you can see the glove. So, 
Um, right, my hand has my arm. So we think, of, and so this act of action on the word gives us the accusative, right? Habio tiniam pulcram, right? Tinya, tiniam. Pulcra, pulcram. Habio tiniam pulcram. I have the pretty ribbon. Um, or the fine ribbon, or the beautiful ribbon. So let's ask the question. Habes ne? Remember, the ne is an enclitic telling us it's a question. Habes ne? Tiniam pulcram. And then the answer. Pulcram tiniam habeo. So pulcram tiniam habeo. Beautiful ribbon habeo I have. Which hat have you got? Now remember, hat, pilius, is masculine. So, quis est tibi pilius? Because we're using est here, and so we're going to have the nominative. Except for this peculiarity of est mihi, it is to me. So, est mihi, it is to me. This is an idiomatic use in Latin. Est mihi, it is to me, pilius, a hat. Right? Est mihi pilius bonus. Right? Est mihi magnus pilius. So, let's ask the question. Qui, qui, which est tibi, is it to you, pilius? Which is it to you, a hat? In other words, which hat have you got? And uh, the answer would be, right? Something like, est mihi, est mihi pilius meus. It is to me, pilius a hat, meus my. So, I have my hat. Um, if we're using habere, habio, so we would say, quem... Pilium habes, because have, have, have requires the accusative. So, quem pilium habes, just like quam kahartam habes, right? But this is a masculine word, and so it's quem. One moment, please. All right, I am back, and... Uh, where was I? Um, quem pilium habes. Which hat do you have? But because it's um, habes, it has to be the accusative. Quem pilium habes. Um, and you would answer something like um, pilium meum. Turpem, remember it's turpis, turpis, turpe, and down here it is turpem, turpem, turpe. So, pilium is masculine. So, turpis becomes turpem. Pilium, meum, turpem, habio. Uh, quae est tibi tainia? Quae est tibi tainia? Quae est tibi tainia est mihi tainia pulcra. Right? So, what, which, which is it to you? A ribbon, right? Est mihi, it is to me. A ribbon, tainia pulcra, pretty. Um, or quam habes tainiam. Which do you have tiniam ribbon? And the answer would be tiniam tuam pulcram habio. Tiniam ribbon tuam your pulcram pretty habio. I have all down here on the arm because it's being acted on by this verb have. Now lots of other verbs will act on the words in this way, but to start off with, we're just using possession, having. 
acting down here, giving us the accusative. Um, that is that, and I'm going to, um, whoops, I need to get something. One moment. Okay, what I'm going to do now, this is going to be a bit long, only in Latin, with no um, parsing or anything like that. I'm just going to go through the dictata, altera, the second um, exercise in Latin only. Um, Habesne pilium pulcrum. Now, if you want to see the English for this, please go to page 12 of Adler's Practical Grammar of the Latin Language for Speaking and Writing Latin, which you can download from Google Books or from archive.org for free. Um, Habesne pilium pulcrum. Etiam domine, yes indeed, domine, master, pilium pulcrum habeo. Habesne pilium meum nequam, um, pilium tuum nequam habeo. Nequam means useless, right? Um, Habesne sal wile. Do you have um, sal wile? Uh, poor quality salt. Habeo sal wile. Habesne sal tuum bonum, sal meum bonum habio, quod sal habes, sal tuum bonum habio, quod sacrum habes, sacrum meum bonum habio, habesne sacrum meum bonum, sacrum tuum bonum habio, quam mensam habes. Mensam pulcram habio. Habesne mensam meam pulcram. Mensam tuam pulcram habio. Quam cahartam habes. Cahartam wilem habio. Habesne cahartam meam turpem. Cahartam tuam turpem habio. Quem pilium wilem habes. Meum Pilium wilem habio, quam tiniam pulcaram habes. Habesne pennam meam pulcaram. Habio pennam tuam pulcaram. And now we're going to do the whole exercise again, starting from the beginning, but using the idiomatic expression, it is to me, which will give us all of the nouns in the nominative up here on the fingertips, and not in the accusative down here on the forearm. So, est ne tibi pilius pulcher. Est mihi pilius pulcher. Est ne tibi pilius meus nequam. Est mihi pilius tuus nequam. Est ne tibi sal wile. Est mihi sal wile. Est ne tibi sal tuum bonum. Est mihi sal meum bonum. Quod sal tibi est. Sal tuum bonum mihi est. Quod sacarum tibi est. Sacarum meum bonum mihi est. Est ne tibi. Sacarum meum bonum. Sacarum tuum bonum mihi est. Quae mensa tibi est. Mihi est mensa pulcra. Est ne tibi mensa mea pulcra. Est mihi mensa tua pulcra. <coughs> Quae caharta tibi est. Caharta mihi wilis est. Est ne tibi caharta mea turpis. Est mihi caharta tua turpis. Qui pilius wilis tibi est. Pilius meus wilis mihi est. Quae tainia pulcra tibi est. Est ne tibi pena mea pulcra, est mihi pena tua pulcra. Uh, if you want to continue with this course, at the moment I only have up to this lesson on YouTube. Of course that will change, so what I've just said now will be wrong in the near future. Go to latinum.org.uk and there you can find the Adler course and it's available in blocks of 9 or 10 lessons I think. Um, 
and um, there's far far more material on the in the audio um, the way I've done the audio is very different to the way I have presented it here on video um, there's Latin English Latin for example in the audio material there is repetition with pauses so you can answer yourself out loud and also far 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 more paradigms more examples of the declensions um, for you to get used to the whole idea Wale, bye.